아 진짜? 어, 어, 근데 어떻게 기억하냐? 걔가 내 고등학교 때. 아. 걔, 걔, 걔. 뭐지? 그러니까 2013년. 어, 뭐. 2013년 때, 너 뭐지? 대강 총회 했을 때. 그, 대충 때 성공하는데. 내가. 그 집이 같은 방이라서 내가 데려줬는데, 그, 꼭세스도 하고. 아, 미친. 야, 조민이 수원이 형이 없다. 수원이 형은 버스에서 하고 직관이 버스에서 하고 어떻게 치? 어떻게 치? 기사 꺼지랬어. 그래서 술안 마시는 그래서 기억 못 나는 거야. 어, 지금 한 번만 내려 보면 되지. 최고 있어요. 네. 결제 수단은 몰라. 제가 Fiscal policy. What else? And uh, current account of the trade. Okay, current account trend. Do we have more exports or imports? Anything else? Maybe the productivity. Productivity. Productivity is long term. Mm -hmm. So we can see here we have capital flows and economic growth. Okay. Uh, then in the long term, trade in your yes. Okay. So we also have these ones, but mainly purchasing power parity, which is inflation we're talking about here, productivity. So then discuss with your partner what is uh, <coughs> recovered in interest uh, return. Covered return. So what is covered return? Yes, 
차감한 이 그러니까 되게 위험할 수 있어요. 또 만약에 이러면은 어, 환율이 거의 안 오르니까 환율이 변동이 없으니까 그러니까 내가 투자해서 다시 돈을 버는데 환율 변동이 없으면 이건 제로야. 근데 대신에 손해를 막을 수 있다. 보험적인 제로. 어, 그렇지. 
So what that means is that if the euro gets weaker, does it affect my investment? No. No, right? It's hedged, it's covered. So one of the reasons investors use this is that usually if the, if the euro gets weaker, like this time, can you see this period here? Uh, between, uh, this is 11, uh, the 6th of November last year, and this is uh, April this year. It went from 9485 to nearly to 12,000. So it went up by about 25%. Okay? We look at the graph for the euro and, and the US dollar. We already studied what happened to the euro at that time last year. We looked at in the FX trading. Did the euro get stronger or weaker? Weaker. <clears throat> the euro got a lot weaker at the same time, right? Okay. So if I invested in that ETF and it wasn't hedged, would I have made such a big profit? If I invested in that fund and I didn't cover my investment, it wasn't a hedged fund, would I have made such a big profit? No. Yes or no? So we can see that uh, November last year, one euro was one dollar thirty, and then it's almost the same as the ETF, right? The euro was getting weaker. It went down by about twenty percent to one dollar ten between November and April. April is here, okay? So the euro got weaker by twenty percent, okay? The euro. This is hedged the ETF, so it means that the European stock market went up by 20%. Okay? So the euro got weaker by 20% between November and April. The European stock market, the euro stocks, 50, the top 50 in Europe, it went up by 20%. Now, if you didn't cover this investment, would you have made any profit? No, you're a Korean investor, okay? The Euro, you invest here in the Euro stocks in November. So in November, you invest in the Euro stocks, right? How much money do you invest? One, one million won. Okay? Then, how, many you, how much is your stock worth? Let's say it's one, 700,000 uh, 700, or 700 euros, right? Then you're happy. Your stock went up by 20%. Stock went up by 20 okay? So the stock is now worth how much in euros? 840 euros, right? So uh, now you're changing your money back to one. But the exchange rate is now not, not, not uh, 1 euro to 1.3, 1,301. Instead, it's 1 euro is 1,101. Okay, so how much money are you going to get back? If you exchange this, you're going to get back 1 million won at this exchange rate. Okay? Do you understand? You got back the same amount of money. Why? Your stock price went up in euros by 20%. Okay? But the one got weaker against the euro. So when you change your money back, you don't get back as much. One, the same amount. Stock market went up 20%, the euro went down 20%. Okay? So what would you do to avoid this problem? Fixed exchange rate. Okay? What's an easy way to fix the exchange rate for an investor? Invest in a fund which does that job for you. Okay? This fund makes a forward contract for the exchange rate. Okay? They buy the stocks in Europe and they, they make a forward contract. Of course, you could do that yourself. You could buy stocks in Europe and then make a forward contract yourself. Is that easy? If you're just investing one million won, are you going to go to all that trouble? buy your own stocks and make your own forward contracts? 
No, right? So that's why people invest in funds or ETFs. They do the work for them. Okay, and then you can get in this ETF went up by uh, this much. If we looked at this, your your stocks fifty without this, what does HAPS on mean? Yes. Hmm? Yes. MIX. Without being hedged, then it's going to be just a straight line, right? Not going up or going down. We wouldn't have made any profit in our fund. So fund managers use this forward contracts a lot, okay? Because I think the European stock market is going to go up. Why? Because the euro is got getting weaker. If the euro gets weaker, why would the European stock market go up? Euro, pro euro product price is down. Yes. The price of European products is cheaper, foreign products is more expensive. So especially exporting countries like Germany and the Netherlands, their stock market will go up because their currency is weaker. Okay? So I think Germany's stock market is going to go up, but I have a problem. If I invest in Germany, the euro will get weaker. So I make a forward contract. Okay? The stock market goes up and I get to keep the profits. Japan is the same, same situation. Japanese currency got very weak over the last few years. The Japanese stock market went up. So here is, here is Codex Japan, which is not hedged. Right? So if we look at this over three years, no, it's just from 2014, it's almost a straight line. Right? This ETF is not hedged. Why? The Japanese stock market went up a lot but the Japanese currency got weaker. So this fund is not making any profit, just a very small one. If we find a Japanese one which is hedged, we'll see that it made a lot more profit over the last few years because it hedged the currency risk. <coughs> so you can decide, to, it's just like the carry trade. People can decide that we can take the risk or we we hope that the currency gets stronger, or else we can uh, just <coughs> here is a hedged one for Japan. Can you see the difference? Right? Over three years. Here we can see the line is going up, right? This is hedged ETF. So what happened here? This one includes a forward contract. So it means that I'm just investing in the stock market. Okay, I'm not, I'm not gambling on the currency. I'm gambling on the stock market only. <laughs> Cutting out the currency risk. Do you have any questions about this? No. If you're investing in a country and the currency is getting weaker, you expect the currency to get weaker, are you going to cover your <coughs> risk or not cover your risk? Cover. If you're investing in a country and you expect the currency to get stronger, are you going to cover your risk or not cover your risk? Okay. okay, so that's a very common strategy for investors. Some country that's doing QE, making their currency weaker, especially an exporting country like Germany or Japan, they know that their currency is getting weaker. It's going to promote their exports, right? So they think the stock market will go up, so they invest in stocks in that country. But of course, they make a forward contract. If they don't make a forward contract, they defeat the whole purpose of investing in that country. Right? They defeat the whole reason of investing in the country. So, <coughs> this is the idea of covered return. We can see clearly in the stock market. Any questions about covered return? No? So we were talking about, the, just started to introduce the interest rate parity model, which is a little bit complicated. So it's going to, don't worry if you don't understand immediately. Okay? We are going to spend some time talking about that. We just introduced the last time. We said that to have a state of equilibrium in the market, do you understand equilibrium? You don't understand equilibrium? Do you understand balance? Yes. <coughs> Equilibrium looks like this. You have the scale on this side and on this side, right? The same weight here and here. So it's level. 
If it's like this, like this, then it's not in equilibrium. Okay? Equilibrium means the same. So the point of the IRP is that it doesn't matter where I invest my money. In, if I'm investing in bonds, okay? or depositing my money in the bank. So let's say I have two countries. I have the US and I have Thailand. In the past, Thailand fixed their exchange rate to the US. Or let's say Hong Kong. These days, Hong Kong is fixing their exchange rate to the US, right? So Hong Kong is 7.8 Hong Kong dollars is one US dollar. So we saw this graph already. It's always been like that, okay? So what can you tell me about the interest rates in the US and Hong Kong? If you know that the currency is fixed the same, what can you tell me about the interest rate in the US and Hong Kong? They're in equilibrium. They have to be the same, right? If the interest rate wasn't the same in the US and Hong Kong, what would happen? Let's say that we have a 5% interest rate in Hong Kong and a 1% interest rate in the US. Yes, people in the US are going to get a loan in the US and invest in Hong Kong. Are they going to lose on the exchange rate? No. No, right? It's fixed. Fixed exchange rate between Hong Kong and the US. Can this happen in real life? No. No, that's called arbitrage. Right? That can't happen. So it's the same situation for currencies. What we are doing is fixing it in the future. Okay? So we are fixing the US dollar against the Korean won, let's say. And we make a forward contract. So next year, next year we, are fixed, we get a fixed rate that we are sure. So it's almost like the Hong Kong dollar. We are sure next year we can change for 1,100 won. Okay? So that's different from today. Today, let's say it's 1,200. Okay. So then it means that what's happening here? Which country has a higher interest rate? Korea. Slightly higher interest rate. So if we want to, we are exchanging the money now here. Are we going to get advantage or disadvantage if we are a Korean with this exchange rate next year? Is this the Korean one getting stronger or weaker? So we're getting an advantage, right? So then which country has the higher interest rate and lower interest rate? We're getting, in Korea, the Korean one is getting stronger. We're getting advantage in the Korean currency. So does Korea have a lower interest rate or higher interest rate? We're already getting an advantage with the currency exchange. Are you also going to give me an advantage with the interest rate? Do you understand? We're already getting an advantage with the currency exchange. The green one is getting stronger. So are you going to give me double advantage? You're also going to give me a higher interest rate? No. No, right? So this one is going to be lower interest, slightly lower interest rate. Just slightly. It's only changing by this much, so we can we have a different interest rate to accommodate, right? Well, it wouldn't be that big of a change, right? It would be one, one, one oh, it wouldn't be that big, right? So that's just one percent difference. So uh, Korea will be four percent interest rate, US will be five percent, okay? So that's what interest rate parity says. It's the same. <coughs> if I made this five percent here, what is everybody going to do? They're going to the same as Hong Kong. They're going to get a loan in US dollars, and then they're going to invest in Korean won. At the end of the year, they have a contract that the Korean won will be stronger, and they will make a 1% profit. Okay? So that situation can't happen. So because of that, the bank makes their forward rate is based on the difference between the interest rates. That's the calculation they use. So it's going to be the same no matter where I invest my money around the world, if I make a forward contract. So that point of, all of the point of this is explaining how does the bank decide the forward rate? That's the point. Okay? They use the interest rate parity idea. So basically the interest rate parity says the forward rate on the currency is equals to the difference in the interest rate of the two currencies. Okay? So repeat to your partner about the interest rate parity model in one sentence. The difference 
the forward rate is the difference between the interest rates in the two currencies. Okay? So say this sentence to your partner. Explain in one sentence. Interest rate partner. Forward rate and interest rate make good equilibrium. So if So let's look at the, the graph. So we can see here Australian US dollar, spot rate, three months rate. Is the foreign currency at a trading at a discount or a premium? What is the IRP explanation for the forward rate? So I'll answer the question here. For the first. Let's do the first one together then, right? So we, what is the base currency here? Australian dollar. Is the number getting higher or lower? Lower. 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 Is the Australian dollar getting stronger or weaker? Stronger. So the Australian dollar is the base currency. If the base if the number is getting lower, is the base currency getting stronger or weaker? So we need to know that. We already studied that before. Okay? That's a very simple thing. <laughs> Here we have the Australian dollar. Maybe the Australian and the US dollar is confusing, right? Here we have the euro. Here we have the US dollar. We have one euro is equal to one dollar and thirty cents. Okay? Then we have one euro is equal to one dollar and twenty cents. Okay? Where is the base currency? Is the, the number is getting lower? Is the euro buying more dollars or less dollars? Is the euro therefore getting stronger or weaker? Okay, so who said stronger the last time? A lot of students said stronger. The number is going down, it's worth less. Okay? It's getting weaker. So I'll try again. Australian and US dollar, what's the base currency? The number is getting lower, is it getting stronger or weaker? Weaker. Weaker. Is it trading at a discount or a premium? Discount. Discount. Right. What's the explanation? So, which country has a has a higher interest rate? U U.S. dollar. U.S. dollar. The Australian dollar is weaker in the forward market. Does that mean that I'm getting advantage or disadvantage? Disadvantage. So, is the Australian do dollar have a higher interest rate or a lower interest rate? Higher, higher interest, rate. interest rate. Higher interest rate. Okay, so do the rest of them yourself with your partner.
뭐라 러시아에다 뭐라 러시아에다 애들 안 하는 이수비 안 오는 거 아니야? 아니야 뭐야 나 아까 봤는데 기숙사에서 달러가 왼쪽에 있을 때는 저 숫자가 내려가면 내려갈수록 가치가 높아지. 그렇지. 아 반대다. 아, 반대니까. constantly getting stronger against the dollar, right? Low inflation currency, strong currency. Interest rate follows inflation, okay? So, low interest rate. Weak currency, Russian ruble, high inflation in Russia, high interest rate in Russia, okay? 
So here we had the trading at the discount. The British pound is getting weaker. So the weaker currency has the higher interest rate. The weaker currency has a high inflation. That's why the British pound is out getting weaker. It has a higher inflation. Okay? That means it has a higher interest rate. Next one. E do now. Yes. So, uh, higher, higher than. Okay, so sometimes we don't have to think about things too much. We know the US dollar and the Japanese yen, right? We know Japan has a lower inflation than the US. <coughs> so, we know the relationship between the Japanese yen and the US. What's going to happen? It's going to be like this, right? The forward rate will be that the US dollar will be trading at a discount. Okay? The reason is the US has a higher interest rate than Japan. Now both the US and the Japan have very low interest rates, so there's very little difference. Okay? But the US might be slightly higher. So US dollar and Swiss franc, uh, EJ Hock. Higher in the US. Okay, so let's see. We can see, we can make the calculation and figure out the. Uh, so, the Australia, we said Australia has higher interest rates. Again, this is, we look at this slide now, this goes, this will be happening for the next 10 years or so on, right? Australia will have a higher interest rate than the US. Okay? Uh, UK also usually has a slightly higher interest rate than the US. Japan, both of them very low interest rates, so very close, but Japan has a lower one, okay? Switzerland, like Japan, is a strong currency, low inflation currency. Okay. So we can get used to the currencies around the world as well. Okay. Zimbabwe, strong or weak currency? Weak currency, right? Switzerland and, and uh, Japan are the two more, more famous strong currencies in the world. Traditionally very low inflation, also low interest rates. So if they have a low interest rate, they will be trading at a premium against the other currencies. And we expect in the long term, what do we expect? The yen to get stronger or weaker in the long term? If the yen and the Swiss franc have low inflation, do we expect those currencies to get stronger or weaker in the long term? Do you want a low inflation currency or a high inflation currency? Low inflation. So Japanese yen and Swiss franc, do we expect them to get Stronger or weaker in the long term? Stronger. 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 Do you have a question? How can you calculate interest rate? How do you calculate the interest rate? Yes. Uh, the difference between the forward rate is equal to the difference between the interest rate. That's the IRP theory. So you can find out what percentage is the difference between here. <coughs> And then that same percentage is the difference between the interest rates. Okay. So you, we didn't know, but you need to know what, what is the interest rate. If you know one interest rate and you know the spot and forward rate, but usually the bank is doing the other way around. The bank is using the interest difference in the interest rate to calculate the forward rate. Okay, we'll go, we'll show, we'll do that kind of calculation later. That's what we're going to do now, right? How is the forward rate calculated? So the market maker banks calculate from three observable numbers. The spot rate, foreign currency interest rate, and home currency interest rate. So we have those four things, right? So if we have three of the things, we can calculate the fourth one. So normally the three things we know is today's exchange rate. We know today's interest rate in the two currencies. And we use those three numbers to calculate forward rate. Okay. So 
what interest rates are used? Where do we find the interest rate? So we use the interbank or wholesale interest rates for currencies. Okay. So <coughs> this is lower than the retail interest rate. Okay. Interbank between the banks. So we can check the forward rates online. Okay. So you can see this kind of thing. US dollar tells us the rate, the interest rate, okay? In each uh, currency. Which one has the lowest interest rate? Yes. Say the US is 0 0.25. So if we say the US is 0 0.25, which one is the lowest one? Japan. Japan, okay? We talked about it. Switzerland also very low, like the US, then British pound, and then Euro and Canadian dollar. Okay. So, <coughs> if we look, we can see here on the yes. Sorry. Canadian dollar interest rate. Yes. Why, why does it change? Why? You mean why do some? Because inflation in Canada is higher. It's a very easy, simple answer. We'll talk about it later too. The interest rate follows inflation. It's the Fisher's law, right? If we have inflation, uh, we can. <coughs> we have to change the interest rate to control inflation. Okay? So, if I have an inf inflation at 5, 10%, I want to slow down the prices. So, I do that by controlling the money supply. If I increase the interest rate, that helps to control the money supply. Okay? If I increase the interest rate, people take less loans. Okay? Companies take less loans. The money supply in the economy is less. Prices should go down. So, uh, we're going to talk about that theory in a little bit. So, good student asking all the questions we're going to study next. In the future, right? So, uh, we can see here just this is the uh, four contracts for six months. They quote down in just pips. So we can find, just we can see the forward rates online. <laughs> so, if we look at, just to explain about this, the way this is set up, they use the pips of the spot rate. So we said, what is one pip? It's 0 0.0001, four decimal places. So, you know, especially for one week, this is two weeks, three weeks, it's very little difference, okay? If we go to three months forward, it's uh, 7.98, okay? So it's going to be trading, we have the euro and the US dollar, trading at a premium. If we look at the US dollar, Canadian dollar, it's going to be 20, the number is 20, so it means that this one on the right, Canadian dollar is selling at the discount, okay? Here, Euro is selling at the premium, US dollar is selling at the discount. Here, uh, US dollar is selling at the premium, and Canadian dollar is selling at the discount, okay? That's just the way they organize the, the quote. So the one on the left is the premium, the one on the right is the discount. <coughs> this is how many pips there is. <clears throat> so this is the formula that we can use that you asked me about to calculate the forward exchange rate. Okay? So we have two formulas, we have European terms and American terms. So first look, let's look at European terms. So. This is the forward exchange rate, FT. That's what we want to find. 
in the European terms, equals the spot exchange rate, S, F forward, S spot, multiplied by 1 plus the interest rate of the foreign currency over 1 plus the interest rate of the US, US currency. Okay? Because we're, most currencies is with the US dollar. Okay? So the US dollar is we're either quoting in European terms or American terms. So let's have, it will help us if we look at the example. Okay? So this is the data in European terms. It's confusing because if we see the US dollar on the left, we think that's American terms. But it's the opposite. Okay? US dollar on the left is European terms. US dollar on the right, American terms. So we know these three numbers. We know that this is the spot exchange rate. We know this is the one year interest rate on the yen and one year interest rate on the dollar. So calculate the forward rate using this equation. The spot rate multiplied by one plus the interest rate. Okay, so that's one plus what? Interest rate on the Japanese yen. What number do we put here? 1.01. 1. 1. 1. 1.1? How many percent of that? That would be 10 percent. 0.01. 1.01. Right? 1 percent is 0.01. 10 percent is 0.1. Okay? And the US one? 1.04. So just this number multiplied by 1.01 over 1.04. So can you make the calculation? So do, do the calculation. Yes. If we do this calculation, we get 0.9711. Okay? Multiply this by 120, it's 116. Now, a good thing to do is always check our answer. Does it look correct? Especially in the test, you might make a mistake. A common mistake is you put this number on the top line and this number on the bottom line. Okay? Then that's going to be more than 1, and this number will be more than 120. So we have to go back here, and we have to check using this reasoning. So which currency is the low interest rate currency? Which has a lower interest rate? Japanese yen. Okay. 
So which country has lower inflation? Japan. Which currency do we expect to get stronger? Japan. Yes. Yes. Low inflation currency gets stronger or weaker? Stronger. Stronger. High inflation currency gets stronger or weaker? Weaker. So is the Japanese yen going to get stronger or weaker? Stronger. Stronger. So is our answer correct? Did the Japanese yen get stronger? Oh yes. Yes, it did. Right. The dollar got weaker. We get less yen for one dollar, and, and the yen got stronger. Okay. So we have check your answer in that way. If you're in the test. Does, it, does my answer make sense? Sh should it get weak? And then, what's the difference of the interest rate? 3%, right? So is this about a 3% difference? 120 to 116.5, is that about a 3% difference? Yes. Is my answer correct? Yes. Okay. So do you have any questions about that? Okay, so then, just before the next class, you can practice doing this one on the American terms. Okay. So then, let's finish there for today. Thank you. <laughs>